Welcome to day four of the 12 Days of Craft Lit 2023. Today, we are bringing you romance, but not romance the way that we normally think about it. This is romance capital R. This is a, a genre of literature that is kind of hard for us. We don't do Arthurian capital A romantic capital R chivalry stories very much anymore. They tend to feel like they're falling into melodrama and kind of overacting on the page. Uh, but they also always have some mystery, some magic, and sometimes a touch of moralizing as well. So we're not going to listen to all of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, but we are going to listen to the Christmas dinner scene. And the special treat that I have for you is first you're going to get to listen to it in Middle English. There's a guy who can do it and did it and recorded it, and I am so grateful to him. And then we are going to listen to it in modern English. You're welcome. I will be linking out in the show notes to all of these things. Uh, our readers, the very kind gentleman who translated this very old text, and to the reader of the Middle English as well. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is important for lots of reasons when it comes to literature and the history of literature, um, in part because there's just a lot that you can read into it since it was written as poetry. Um, you know, the words that get chosen are very specific and the lines are very compressed. So the, the writer really has an opportunity to do interesting things. And it's kind of funky because some people read it just symbolically. Some people read it just magically. And some people read it allegorically. And I think it's probably not a good idea to pigeonhole Sir Gawain and the Green Knight into any one category. So if you get a chance, please listen to the whole thing. I will link out to at least one version of it. Um, it was told and retold back in the day, and it has been translated and retranslated since. There are lots of versions, and we're going to listen to one of them. Christmas Scene at Camelot from Sir Gawain and the Green Knight by the anonymous Pearl Poet, read in Middle English. This king lie at Camelot upon Christmas, with mony luflich lord, ladies of the best, reckonly of the runde table, all the rich brother, with rich revel or richt, and wretchless mirthes. There turnied Dulcus betimus full mony, justed full jolly these gentle knichtes seized and to the court carol's to mac for there the fest was silige full fifteen dies with all the met and the mirth that men cousa vise such glaum and glae glorious to hear der din upon die dancing on nichtes all was hap upon high in halles and chambres with lordes and ladies, as levest him thought. With all the well of the world, thy wonned their salmon, the most keed knichtes under Christus selven, and the lovelockest ladies that ever leaf hadden, and he the cumlockest king that the court haldes. For all was this firefolk in her first age on sill, the happenest under heaven, king heest man of will. It were no great near to neven so hard ye hair on hill. Will no year was so yep that it was no a common, that die double on the days was the doth served 
fraw the king was cumman with knichts into the hall the chantry of the chapel chevered to an end lewd cree was the request of clerkes and other no well knighted or newe neven at full oft and see then reach forth run and to retch hondesel yea at yeres yiftes on he yelled em behond debated busily about the giftes ladies lachet full lewd doch thy lost hadden and he that one was not wroth that my ye well trow all this mirsta thy madden to the mad team when thy had washen worthily thy went and to set the best born eye above as it best seemed when gwenor full guy grised in the midis dressed on the dear days dubbed all about small sendal besides a cellure her or of triet to loos of tars tapitus in och that were embroidered and beaten with the best gems that micht be preved of priests with pennies to be in die the cum locust to discree there glent with eon grey a sam locker that e'er he see soth mocht no man say but arthur would not eat till all were served he was so jolly of his joyfness and somewhat chilled gared his leaf licked him licht he loved the lass other to lenge lee or to longe sit so busy at him his young blood and his brine wild and also another manner mevet him eke that he thurch noble i had nomen who would never eat upon such a dare die ere him devised were of some aventurous thing an uncouth tal of some mine mervail that he micht trow of alderes of armes of other aventurous other some such him besocht of some sicker knicht to join with him in justing in jopardy to lie led a leaf for leaf lev uch on other as fortune would fulsen him the firer to have this was the king's countenance where he in court were at each far and fest among his frae mene in hall therefore of bas so fair he stichtless stiff in stall full yep in that new year much mirth he mas with all thus there stond as in stall the stiff king his selven talkant before the he table of trifles full hend there go the gawan was grised gwenor besid and agravine a la dure mine on that other seed sittes both the king's sister sonnes and full sicker knichtes bishop baudouin above beginnes the table and iwan urien's son ette with himselven these were dicht on the days and dare worthily served and sith and money sicker sedge at the seed borders then the fierce course come with cracking of trumpets with money banner full bricht that there be hanged no anacry noise with the noble peepers wield a werbless and wicht wacknet lot that money hurtful he hef at her touches dainties driven therewith of full dare metes foison of the fresh and on so fail a dishes that pin to find the place the peple before for to set the silvener that ser seus halden on close each led as he loved himself 
there lacht without and loth i two had dishes twelve god bear and bricht wien both end of christmas scene at camelot from sir gawain and the green knight by the anonymous pearl poet read by martin geeson This king lay at Camelot, nigh on Christmas, with many lovely lords of leaders the best. Reckoning of the round table, all the rich brethren, with right ripe revel and reckless mirth. Their tonied tykes by times full many, jousted full jollily these gentle knights. Then carried to court their carols to make, for there the feast was alike full fifteen days. With all the meat and mirth men could devise, such clamour and glee glorious to hear. Dear din in the daylight, dancing of nights, all with happiness high in halls and chambers, with lords and ladies as liked them all best. With all that's well in the world were they together, the knights best known under the Christ himself, and the loveliest ladies that ever life honoured, and he the comeliest king that the court rules. For all were fair folk and in their first age still, the happiest under heaven, king noblest in his will, that it were hard to reckon so hardy a host on hill. While New Year was so young it was new come in, that day double on the dais was the dole served. For the king was come with knights into the hall, and chanting in the chapel had chimed to an end. Loud cry was their cast of clerics and others, nor nurtured anew and named full oft. And see the rich run forth to render presents, yelled their gifts on high, yield them to hand argued busily about those same gifts. Ladies laughed out loud, though they had lost, while he that won was not wrath, that you'll know. All this mirth they made at the mealtime. When they had washed well, they went to be seated. The best of the barons above, as it seemed best, with Guinevere full gaily, gracing their midst. Dressed on the dais there, adorned all about, splendid silk by her sides, and sheer above, of true Toulouse, of tartar tapestries plenty, that were embroidered, bright with the best gems that might be priced proved with pennies any a day. The comeliest to descry, glanced there with iron grey, a seemlier ever to the sight, sooth might no man say. But Arthur would not eat till all were served, he was so joyous a youth and somewhat boyish. He liked his life lively, he loved the less either to long lie idle or to long sit. So busied him his young blood and his brain wild, and also another matter moved him so, that he had nobly named he would never eat, on such dear days before he had been advised, of some adventurous thing, an unknown tale, of some magi marvel that he might believe, of ancestors, arms, or other adventures, or else till someone beseeched for some sure knight to join with him in jousting, in jeopardy to lay, lay down life for life, allow each to the other, as fortune might favour them a fair advantage. This was the king's custom when he in court was, at each fine feast among his many friends in hall. Therefore with fearless face he stands straight and tall, full lively at that new year, much mirth he makes withal. Thus there stands straight and tall the king himself, talking at the high table of trifles full courtly, their good Gawain was graced by Guinevere beside, and Agravain a la dure, main on the other side sits, both the king's sister sons and full sure knights. Bishop Baldwin above, he begins the table, and Ywain, Urien's son, ate alongside him. These sat high on the dais and deftly served, and many another sat sure at the side tables. Then the first course came with crack of trumpets, with many a banner full bright that thereby hung, new noise of kettle drums and noble pipes, wild warbles and wide wakened echoes, that many a heart full high heaved at their notes, dainties drawn in therewith of full dim meats, foods of the freshest and in such files of dishes they find no room to place them people before, and to set the silver that holds such servings on cloth, each his load as he liked himself, there ladled and nothing loath, 
Every two had dishes twelve. Good beer and bright wine both. I hope you enjoyed our little foray into medieval English. And again, how often do you get to hear that? Not very. It's kind of cool. We did do Chaucer on Craft Lit years ago with John Scholes, who we lost several years back. And, um, and if you're interested in listening to some Canterbury Tales, we can link out to that in the show notes as well. And, uh, and you can go pick it up and, and listen to some more Middle English style fun. And if you like what we do here, please consider liking and subscribing us on iTunes. Thumbs upping and subscribing on YouTube, visiting patreon.com slash craftlit and becoming a patron of this art. And you can always go to Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash craftlit channel to get links out to all of our social media, mine and the shows and, uh, and everything that is connected with the Craftlit podcast. After 17 years, we show up in lots and lots of different places. So you can pretty much always find us. Thanks. Have a great one. Bye. Away a manger, no crib for a bed, a little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head, the stars in the bright sky look down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus Sleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus.